What is up, hot makers? Welcome to Hot Makes right here on the Edge of Tech. On this one and only first time pre recorded Hot Makes. Pre recorded what? Pre recorded. Why are we doing that, Jim? Well, we're doing that because due to time constraints and time change, a difference in times, right, of our guest today, yeah. uh, we are going to have a little fun with. Uh, should we just say who it is right away? Let's. Uh, we we should. We'll bring him in. Sure. People will recognize we'll him. He's very he's very well, well known in the space. He's very well known. You, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today on this pre-recorded version, we have Mr. Breaks and Makes, aka 3D. What, what do we call him? Noob? The AKA noob. noob. 3D Maker Noob, formerly the formerly <laughs> there known as 3D Maker Noob, Mr. Breaks formerly, and Makes. I like formerly known as. Yeah. It's like almost like Prince, but not. So pretty soon he'll just be a symbol. He'll just be like a wrench. <laughs> and a, yeah. Well, welcome to the, uh, like I said, Hot Makes on the Edge of Tech, where we aim to educate and entertain the maker community. I'm Nerdy J. This is the pre recorded pooch. In the in the future? No. Yeah, no. you're in the future. Well, right now, past. I'm in the now. It's there's a whole multiverse thing going on. It's very time zones are hard, people. Okay. <laughs> we 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 learned an interesting thing. We tried to figure out like maybe we could stay up late, maybe Joe could get up early. But the truth is, the guy doesn't sleep really that much at all. And and hot makes is traditionally broadcast during like the five hours that he would normally sleep. It's like three, <laughs> two or three AM in the morning in Central European time normally. But uh yeah. Yes, greetings. Welcome to the show. This is a show where you tag all the awesome stuff you see out there in the makersphere. Hot makes. Hot makes. Hashtag. And we opine on it as we, we do. And we got some good today. ones today. Uh, oh, in classic fashion, as you've seen in the last or in the past few weeks, uh, we're going to bring Joe in. We're going to have a little fun with him for a minute. We're going to jump right into hot makes. And then we're going to go to a cool interview with, uh, with Joe. I'm super excited to talk to him about the whole change he's working on. I mean, uh it's gonna be awesome and the the teases on twitter my hands are crazy right now aren't they yeah yeah the, te the teases on twitter that he's doing with oh man i we'll get into it but Wait, before we get in with him though can i just really quick say on that uh, angus's lead-in music you know i see yes. it every time and it says and it says it, well the font it's unclear it, I'm, I'm assuming it says anti-hero but it could be anti-herd it could, we should have because it's a O or a D. So I don't know. Is Angus against herds of some kind, or is it anti, <laughs> you know? So just just an observation. Maybe. But I love that guy's music, man, and it's yeah. it's so fun. Uh, I and, do too. I wonder if it's kangaroo herds. Is that a herd? Could, is it a herd of kangaroo? I don't think it's a herd of kangaroo, but uh, maybe wallaby. You know, tell us in the comments below. Is it a herd of kangaroo or what is it? I don't know. Anyway, that's your fun digression for this morning. <laughs> Without further ado, let's bring in Mister Makes and Breaks, three D Maker Noob himself. Formerly known. Form How you doing, Joe? I believe it's Kangaroo Mob. A mo it's oh, a mob. mob. All right. <laughs> See, where were you when we were talking about this? See, we educate. <laughs> we hope you guys have learned something today, if nothing else. Is that true? Is it a mob? Is it a I mob? Don't know. I believe. I, I think it is. It sounds mob. right. I tell you what, if they were coming at me in, in a herd, I think it would be a mob. It would be like a mob. I'd be running. <laughs> Man, I wouldn't want to go up against one kangaroo, never mind a whole mob of them. So. Right. <laughs> Oh, uh, too good. Well, how are you doing out there? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. I yeah. and, and you we're know doing this, we're doing this at a decent time, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for, for people who don't know, you're in you're in Malta, right? Yes, I am. And if I remember right, you're like, are you seven hours ahead of Pooch's time? No, uh, seven of you, you nine of me. Okay, seven oh. hours ahead of me and nine hours ahead of Pooch's time, right? So yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're doing this actually on, what is this, Sunday, um, November 29th? It's our Sunday. And it's my Sunday morning. It's just Sunday evening and yep. lunchtime. Pretty but we're all on for, Sunday. Uh, for dinner and then bed. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, uh, I we're going to have a little fun with you. We're going to have, we got a lot of really hard questions we're going to throw at you. But hard hitting. Yeah, hard. I mean, totally, totally. All the all the hard ones. Like, like, what is your symbol gonna be when you just turn into a symbol? I, you know. <laughs> but uh, it'll probably be something like smashed glass or blue smoke. Ooh. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, I think first we should probably jump into some hot makes, have a little fun with that, and uh, I, you know, we keep playing this intro. I know Caleb was watching. And I'm going to get Caleb on a brand new intro segment for this. But tell me in the comments below, is it hot or not? Mm -hmm. What do you think 
of those intro segments, Joe? <laughs> Kinky. <laughs> <laughs> we we span all musical genres. Too, I mean, Joe. I got like a little bit to light up a cigar and get a glass of brandy or something. <laughs> I, I love it. Co Cavassier is the, the, the proof <laughs> drink for that. That yeah. one is true. Well, the first one we got to feature today. You posted this, uh, I think, a day or two ago. And, uh, you know, you have a video coming up soon, but this is a little yeah. upcycling. What is this? What are we looking at? So first, uh, first, I'm going to say that is hot. OK, it's hot. Oh, yeah, it's hot. It's it's very hot. hot. And that <laughs> is this right here. So this here let me give you some reflective image. Shiny. So um, about two years ago, I did a video on purge blocks. And it was like kind of like why purge blocks exist and why we can never fully get rid of them completely. And I kept all those purge blocks. I tend to keep absolutely everything I can <laughs> because in my mind, they're absolutely beautiful and I need to find a way to do something with them. So and you're saying you're, you're a hoarder then is what you're saying? Pretty much. Okay. Um, <laughs> initially, I thought about doing sort of like a, a an abstract wall thingy, you know, with kind of like a, a oh, skyline, cool. something like that. Yeah. But now that I uh, I rebranded and pivoting onto CNC and resin and all these other things, I kind of came up with the idea of putting them all together and do a, a wall clock out of them. There, I there love go. that, man. That's that's fantastic. What a great use. And uh, yeah, uh, I love that. Let me, let me blow that up. I was just changing. There we go. Can you? Yeah, yeah. let's see that. Oh, it's... That a is 12. phenomenal. Oh, wait, and I see a nine and a three. So, yeah, I so see myself. I CNC'd an inlay for the numbers. So these are also 3D printed numbers. Awesome. Oh, and, the, and they just snap in there. Look at that. Snap in there. Like, nice. That is hot. Yeah. Very smash, hot. Smash that yeah. like button and, and comment hot in the in the comments below. This is hot right wow. here. Hot. Well, that's that's <laughs> that's fantastic, and that segues well into uh, you. You mentioned that you're you're pivoting. You know, obviously, yeah. you started the channel focused on three D printing. What made you decide to get into some more mixed media uh, making? Um, I, so I absolutely love three D printing. I've been doing it now for like three or four years, but I just feel like I do much more than just three D printing when I'm at home. I do all kinds of things and. I always felt like I cannot show them on the channel because they're not 3D printing related, you know, and people have grown used to the idea that um, I only do 3D printing, nothing else. In fact, the only few times that I've did something that didn't major, ma majorly involve 3D printing, oh, it was <laughs> comments were... <laughs> Oh, well, you pigeonholed yourself. You pigeonholed yourself. <laughs> also, you're not really a noob anymore, right? Yeah, so exactly. maybe it's appropriate. To I, it's funny because my channel was 3D Maker Noob. Then I changed to 3D MN because I got so much hate because you just you know you're you're uh, you're playing with people's feelings because you're not really a noob. You're just pretending to be a noob. Like you have no idea how many things I destroy before I get to where I am. Oh, you're playing with people's emotions, man. Well, there's no there's no pleasing everybody, is there? Exactly. I, so, I believe we just figured out that your symbol will just be a crying emoji. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I I just I I spent quite a few months after the the whole PPE thing um, went through, and I I just spent quite a few months thinking about what I want, what I want to do, um, whether it's in life like a personal business of mine and everything. I I decided to get a CNC, a large format CNC, uh, because I have someone I work with here where I do kind of like uh, plaque trophies on the wall. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can cut the bases and 3D print the, the actual emblem on them. And then I started talking with my wife. I was like, maybe we should expand to more tools and everything. And then I can expand on the channel. And then I just decided to buy all kinds of things uh, and work. <laughs> and now I have literally tons of tools. Just an excuse awesome. to get more tools, Joe. Yes. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. I, I love, love that excuse. I love that excuse. 
Well, listen, we're very excited to see what uh, you continue to break and to make for us. For sure. uh, and and I know that you, you'd you mentioned that, you know, the workshop is still very much in progress. And so oh, yes. you've teased us with some really neat uh, designs. I noticed like where your miter saw is that little uh, drop down thing. Yeah. So if you, if you haven't seen this, guys, go go to Joe's channel. Check out some of his, uh, right. his teaser videos also on his Twitter. Do, do you have anything on your YouTube yet about the workshop? Uh, um, I haven't. They're, they're probably at the end of some some videos. Right. The last couple of videos, I sort of gave um, a, a flash of what the my mobile workbench is looking like at the nice. moment. It's still a work in progress, and the reason being is that these projects take so much time. Sure. That I only work on things that I need to for sort of like the workshop itself when I have some downtime. Which is never. I need to produce videos. <laughs> right. Which right. Never. Yeah. Take you know priority. Yeah. yeah. And then was that workbench that you, you did, is that your design or had you taken inspiration for that? So I that took place? inspiration from a channel called, um, I believe it's Woodshop Junkies. Is a okay. South yeah, I've guy. seen that. Yeah. Um, but it, it, they work on different, um, like my, the sheets that we get here, the plywood sheets, for example, are different sizes. Really? Um, so we have to work with, I had to work with the size. The biggest we get here is like, I believe four feet by eight feet. Okay. That's that's US that's dimensions. Yeah. yeah. Four by eight uh, is standard here. This guy's like sheet was like six feet by ten feet. Oh wow. <laughs> that's a big sheet. I was like, how the hell did he get that? Yeah. Um, so I had to work with what I had. I had to redesign the plans in Fusion 360. Um at work I, I had to work with the limits of space I had. Nice. And different since I'm using different machines. I have to work with different measurements in different sections of it. So it's going to have a revolving um, a thickness planer. It's a hideaway table saw, a different, uh, sorry, a different, uh, a hideaway miter saw, miter different saw. table saw, different air compressor, different shop vac system. Nice. So. Sure. Very well, give cool. it give it your own flair. Well, that's well, yeah, that's awesome. Exactly. We cannot wait. You got tag hot makes on that, so we can show that off when you're uh, when Absolutely. you're ready. But well, but, it, uh, and really quick before we jump off, I mean, you you are spending all this time and energy, you know, building this thing. You you don't, uh, you know, you mentioned well, you you can only do it in your downtime, but you don't feel like you want to record that actual journey, that process for the channel, uh, just because you want to get it done more quickly. That's one of the reasons. The second is. I believe if I had to record the whole process, mm. to be completely honest, um, I'd get the experts weighing in constantly. Like, that's not how you do it. That's, that's yeah. a, I, you know, this is my bench. I think that's an ongoing challenge for any YouTuber out there that you're yeah, always so. going to have the people out there that are all pining on, exactly. on how so, you should but, do so what it. What I'll do is once it's ready, I will do a video sort of like a tour of the workbench because it deserves a tour of itself. It's going to have so many things. Right. And I will release the plans and I will explain how I built it. Nice. Right? And I think that well, would be much easier. I think the I think the appropriate uh, the comment is you do you Joe you do you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome well let's 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 rock through these hot makes and uh, what else we got here let's see oh man this one uh, let's I see this is Dumbo today yes Lewis Harris uh, Wally Gator just did a Dumbo and I'm gonna pop this open this is on a Piapoli Phenom ooh that's too soon for me but uh, <laughs> look at this look at this. Uh, look at the look ah. at the finish, like the sheen on the chin. It's almost got right. a like a satin finish to it, uh, but so smooth and it is uh, not surprising. I mean, Wally Gator always just does amazing stuff. I wonder how much sanding that entailed. <laughs> That's well, your favorite. I, when I saw this, I for some reason my mind I thought it was an overlay of the cartoon mm -hmm. on a uh, photo. Yeah, like it just looked pristine. It pops. Cool. You know what this reminds me of? Have you seen the ads for the 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 cake makers where they like take yeah. an object like this and yeah. then and it looks like a model and then they cut it and it's actually cake? Like it, yes. it looks like it could be a cake. That's incredible. I would definitely eat a Dumbo cape. cape. cake. Would you? <laughs> oh yeah. Not even I would no eat a Dumbo sized cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My wife is um, she can't eat anything that has a face on it. It doesn't matter if it's chocolate. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. It's a cookie. If it has a face on it, she can't eat it. 
Well, that's an interesting <laughs> policy. I don't know if I agree with that. that Which is coming quite handy if you want to save some food for later and not have Yeah. <laughs> well, usually I just put my face on it. I'll just bite the head off and I'll be like, here you go. You don't have to worry about it now. And then oh. she doesn't <laughs> no. That's tough. Uh, all right. What do we got next? Let's nice see. Nice job, Wally. Oh, oh the worm. Luby. Have you seen this yet? Oh, that is beautiful. This is uh, also printed on a phenom. Um, I gotta pop this open full screen. Look at this. That is gorgeous. Phenomenal. Uh but, I wish look, I man. I wish I knew how big it was. Like where's, where's the banana for scale, right? Well, it's countertop size. Yeah, no banana, but you know, it uh, seems like a good size. Also, you said it was on a phenom, so we know right. it's got some it's a detail though, and the painting. Yeah, for sure. I don't feel like I've had an opportunity to see a lot of Luby's painting ability. You know, she's always shown off the modeling and all that right. stuff. Like she's yeah. obviously just all around artist. I know that I need to print this. I mean, that did. <laughs> let us know in the comments. Have you printed this or are you going to print it now? Because I tell you what, it, I think this model is phenomenal. I, I want to make a whole chess set uh, if she doesn't yeah. already. Ooh. She might have it, right? Is that this is part awesome, of a, yeah. is this a part of a chess set? Maybe I, I need to know that. I'm, I'm going to say it probably will become part of a chess set. Yeah. If it's not, it needs to be a full chess set yeah. like this would be amazing. Yes. All right. She has right. the perfect designs to be putting together a chess set, no doubt. Yes. And if you printed this big enough, it potentially could even be a dice tower. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there you go. All right. What's next? Ooh. Here we go. Little Hold Nick. <laughs> oh. He's doing, doing some resin. And uh, here, look at that. Oh, there she finished her bone. Oh, her she, oh. Her ear. Hang on. We, we we need a we need a uh, momentary break of the hot makes to bring who, you a who is this Bella Joe? break Bella break this is, this is Bella oh She's my baby <laughs> oh hey Bella how you doing looks like a, a perfect lap dog for you Joe she is very well behaved just, just had no problem I'll just be quiet I'll just be sitting yeah. right here no, perfect no, she'll spend hours like this I'll be working and she'll just sit here. <laughs> I have a couple of cats like that, but um, <laughs> yeah, cats. So, what does Bella think of this ornament here? Ooh. What? Mm -hmm. what do you Two blinks <laughs> means hot. <laughs> Two blinks means hot. <laughs> I love that. Amazing. Really so, this is little De little Nick Demello. So, they're the powerhouse couple. These two. We got Big yeah. Nick and Little Nick, and yeah. so now we're doing some Christmas resin work here. I, it's awesome. Crafty uh, plus 3D equals pretty. I mean, let's see. Just in case you wonder, here you go. Boom. Awesome. Beautiful. This is such a great time of year for 3D printing making in general, obviously, where yeah. we can actually utilize our tools to make awesome, personalized, unique gifts for other people. Right. And I just can't get enough of the creativity around this and the amount of joy people have in actually doing it because it's like, they have a good excuse to put it on display for you know this sure. time of year. We the think is, stuff like this is absolutely amazing, and it requires very little work to get it to look so amazing. I mean, resin is just absolutely insanely awesome for these things. I mean, you have the time; it takes the time to actually do this, but it, it takes much less work than people think because resin is just so easy to use and it just inspires you to do stuff like this nice i wish uh well my wife is really good at resin jewelry and stuff like that um me not i don't the patience for me i don't have the patience for it you know what this <laughs> reminds me of is a new take on the old uh you guys ever remember like the sun catchers or stain, yeah. stained glass work where people yeah. do like leading and obviously a lot more going into that kind of thing right but 3d printing actually enables a nice <clears throat> you know um platform to right. to you know bring more people into this and and to maybe not have to worry about some of the harder details of it and and focusing on uh on getting that resin that shiny resin that grabs everybody's yeah. eye and yeah. i can't remember if we featured it yet um but someone did that they made a what looked like a 3d printed stained glass window but basically what they did is they 3d printed the base and then they filled each section with colored resins and right. then the clear, like a clear over the top of it. It was super awesome. I uh, I have to go back and see if we can find that for maybe next week or something. But 
Um, just like you're talking though, you can throw it up in the window, a little sun catcher. Maybe it throws off the, the, you know, colored beams or something. Yeah. So I love it. Sun catcher. Yeah. All right. What's that? Oh, John Mack. Let's see. <laughs> I got to pop this up. John Mack made this little owl and I, I love this owl. Look at this. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> is it a, is it a key hanger? Yeah. Is it just the, key, okay. And so you hang hanger. your, you hang your keys on there and now right. it wakes up. It opens on. Awesome. Isn't that yeah. great? So cool. I love that. And uh, I think he said he needed to find something, uh, but I need to find a heavier county weight, counterweight, but yeah, it's a little owl key maker. Um, I'm assuming he'll throw it up for everybody to, I thought he said down here, maybe he didn't in this chat. Um, I think he said he was going to throw the design up at some point, but I love that. The owl, the owl with the eyes. That's phenomenal. It's beautiful. Obviously it creates a, a whole potential ecosystem of characters that have opening eyes, you know, for anybody, if you're a dog person, if you're a cat person, if you're an owl person, you right. know, uh, and, and, uh, I love again, talking about like, that's something that I think would be great to make that you could give as a gift and people would really enjoy it. Absolutely. Right. And right now there's so many Christmas markets and stuff like that going on that stuff like this, people would just absolutely love to pick up a hundred percent. And uh, you know, we talk about, you know, we're, right now it's, it's uh, black Friday, cyber Monday weekend. Mm -hmm. And then, and then there's a lot of uh, encouragement to shop small. I don't know if you have that in Malta, Joe, but we have a, a whole shop small, uh, thing here where where a lot of people are encouraged to support small business and so right. you know the maker community is a great example of that where you know it's hard times for people right now uh, maybe consider buying some unique products supporting local makers and things like that uh, with your gift giving right you know, and Malta, at least no one really focuses on that um, mainly because everyone tries to be a thief here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I mean, sad. <laughs> I mean, it was Black Friday um, the, this week. And, you know, in the recent years, Malta has, you know, gotten into this Black Friday thing. Okay. The only problem is that I don't think we really got the hang of how it works because on Black <laughs> Friday, like, there were people who went to take a quote for things two weeks ago. Okay. And they went again on Black Friday. And it's even more, and yet they're discounted. <laughs> oh man! Oh, no, I thought you were going to tell me Black that. Friday. Uh, they interpret it as like the purge, and it's just yeah, like it's chaos really in the streets. <laughs> it's it just, no, we do it wrong here. <laughs> but maybe you're well, newer to it. It takes some time to get used to the black. Yeah, the black. Yeah. Well, and I, this year is unique because you know historically it's based on on the dark nature of humans where you know we have door buster deals and people are fighting each other in line right with the super cheap tv at best buy or whatever right well you know and really though in the last couple years um they've kind of gone away from that a little bit and they've actually extended the sales so you can get them like all weekend or something or even yeah, like for before, instance you brought up best buy whole, usually for the whole week here yeah i was just gonna yeah. say you brought up best buy and they they threw out their sales like a week early and then yeah i think they had some doorbuster stuff but you could still get them online yeah. and uh what what's funny is that um you could walk into a store and be like oh this video game i don't know is on sale right and then se seven hours later it's still there on sale and and like four years ago that that the shelves would be empty people would be fighting <laughs> we'd hear reports that at walmart that people got crushed in our city oh they God. made them line up <laughs> in the parking lot and rush like run and some some lady got like trampled <laughs> it's like what the heck somebody's <laughs> always gonna die on black i mean <laughs> no. so i hope not not anymore though especially South park has done the perfect re representation of what black friday used to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it well nice work john mack i love the owl hit that hot or comment hot in the uh comments if you love it too um what do we got next oh chris russell meat, meat. <laughs> I apologize. Also, kudos. That, <laughs> yes. That's a, that's a, that's that's a good rare over there. Yes, that is a good rare. Well done, Chris. Not good well good done. Rare. That's a good rare. Not well done. Yeah. Personally, yeah. I like blue. I like my me to still have sort of like a heartbeat going through it. Nah. Blue. <laughs> oh yeah. I blue. Love. Okay. That's a that's a new it's color for us. rare. <laughs> if it's if it's blue, I'd tell, I'd be questioning where you get your meat there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, so on the black, black market meat. It's literally <laughs> just before rare. 
You <laughs> literally just sear it, increase the temperature a little bit. That's it. It's ready. You don't cook it at all. Oh, man. So I'm, that I'm not... may as well still be on the cow. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I need it. I, I, it's a sunburned I'm cow. A piece of a walking cow. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like chewing on the tail of a live cow. <laughs> We just lost all our vegetarian followers. Um, yeah, exactly. uh, <laughs> no. Hey, uh, uh, I did ask why he didn't invite us. And did you see his response? No. Uh, let me let me scroll down here. I said, where was our invite? He said, sorry, man. Only had enough COVID tests for immediate family. Uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> nice work, Chris. Uh, I am I am jealous. That looks amazing. That's definitely a hot make. Hot, uh, hot and, make and, of... We're, hey, we're getting into the cooking, the culinary. We don't if, do a lot if, of culinary on here. Well, if if Joe's not involved, it probably was hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we got next? Bob Carnes. Uh, I love this. A Miles Morales Spider-Man mo model by uh, Wexter. Awesome. Uh, MK3S printed solid. Printed solid. That was awesome. Printed solid. Jesse Soul Black uh let's see what do we got here design white blue whale gray and blood red and prusament galaxy silver i gotta pop this open look at yeah. that that is yeah. really clean like well red. wexter always does amazing yeah. stuff right right I, now i look i just saw into the spider verse like like a week ago actually uh sean when i was with joel in uh, seattle like two weeks ago we started watching it but it was like you know, two in the morning, and I I can't stay up all night the way Sean does. But uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> he started showing it to me, and then I watched the end of it here with my son. He likes the the new mob. But uh, have you seen it, Joe? Do you know the the mm -hmm. new the new Spider Man? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't. What do you think of Miles Morales as the new Spider Man? I I I honestly don't have an opinion because I'm not like one of those diehard you know Spider Man fans. To me, Spider Man is Spider Man. That's it. Doesn't matter who's who's Peter Parker or Miles Morales. Exactly. Who's behind I mean, the mask? Personally, personally, to me, best Peter Parker was um, like the first Peter Pan. To was Toby it? was it? Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire. Maguire. Maguire yeah. 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 To me, because that's what I grew up knowing. Right. Um, you know. What about, like, wait, do you feel the same way about Batman? Then, like anybody can play Batman, or do you have a favorite Batman? Except Ben um, Affleck. Ooh. Personally, personally. Um, Michael Keaton, Val right. Kilmer, those were the two. Like Jack Nicholson right. is a Joker. Oh, exactly. Yes. So the, like, I really, I I'm not trying wanted... to say how old I am. I'm yeah. just, you know, that's 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 the cult. You know, that's, I'm I'm that's with it. you. I'm with you. I yeah. always wanted that uh, the Michael Keaton Batmobile. Like, the, the, I can uh, tell you something. Really long one. No one will replace Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. That's true. No one. Amen. Ever. Amen. And she could still do it today, and she could still pull it off. <laughs> I, uh, I, if you like that to... comment, let hot, us know hot, in hot. the comments below. That was a that was a hot comment. Hot <laughs> comment. <laughs> Old statement. Yeah. Maybe you disagree. Let us know what your feeling is on the new Spider Man. You know, but I, I, I got you. Got to hand it to Marvel for for trying to be with the times, with trying to keep you know characters re relevant, make them relatable to the modern crowd. I, I, I get that. I do get that, and I thought they had some neat takes. And I got to tell you, the animation technique on Into the Spider Verse was insane. Like it blew my yeah. mind. I kept commenting when I was watching with Sean. I'm like, "How is this done? Is it 3D that they animate over? Like, did you did you have that reaction when you watched it? Yeah, it's it's insane. I mean, no, it's absolutely awesome. But still. yeah, Jim, it's yeah. worth checking out because it's a I'm very un it's a is really it unique a, animation style. Is it on a certain platform or? I think it's on Netflix right now. Netflix, okay. Netflix, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make a note um, to, to do that. I'm definitely going to yeah. watch that today. Well, probably, you know what? I'm going to watch it today with a little man. Why not? Oh, there you go. Yeah, why not? Get some, indoctrinate them young. That's good. Dad wins. Dad wins. All right. What do we got next here? JT, I, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this. The Spaghetti Benchy. Yeah. But I, I love this. Uh, oh, normally, she got up. She's not sure. She's not. She's not. Eh. Okay. Normally, would call this a hot mess. Um, yeah. But what's hilarious about this, and I didn't, I purposely enhance. I, I did not go into the actual tweet itself for this one. So this is what this is. I think the one that uh, started it, right? I think. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that. But if you if you scroll here, 
totally looks like a Benji. So let me <laughs> check this out. Yes. <laughs> well, the, the amazing thing about it is he made it reproducible. That's what I was getting at. Right. So not only did he make it right, then he's like, wait, completely reproducible. <laughs> I love it. What? I'm trying to figure out how. <laughs> like that uh, one, he actually it, he he must have just like completely over overdid the extrusion thickness of it. I don't know. I, <laughs> does he ta does he talk about his technique? Oh, uh, let's see. The best worst bench. Like a layer at a time. So like we'll do this layer. No, not this one. We'll do this one. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think you would get if you just completely jacked the extru yeah. like like that yeah. you were you had a two millimeter nozzle. Up. Remove yeah. oh, the, just uh, every other line. <laughs> remove random lines. Just and nice. I love that Terry Terry reached out and said STL. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's kind of art. Sometimes uh, the failure it can be. Oh, here beautiful. we go. Here we go. Oh, uh, okay. One wall, five percent infill, no supports, no bottom, one top. Point three, point three two <laughs> layer height on a point four nozzle at oh, seventy percent extrusion. So, okay. ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching, here's what we want to see for next week. Use these uh, settings. One wall, 5% infill, no supports, no bottom. One top, 0.32 layer height on a 0.4 nozzle with 70% extrusion. Let's see your benchies. Tag us. Hashtag hot makes for next week. Um, Spaghetti. I call it spaghetti. Awesome. He calls like it that. a bad like benchy. But uh, what other what other models might this technique look cool on? I mean, I don't know. You you might not think it looks cool. I think it's interesting. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yeah. You know what? I I want to see this on a, an Aria Dragon. It would just like a spaghetti Aria like, Dragon. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. How about you, Joe? Uh, lattice cube from Angus. Oh, <laughs> that just would be a. It looked like a fur ball, a tumbleweed. Yeah. <laughs> oh man i love it nice work uh original bfg tag this um so this is i think you chimed in a few times on this pooch so he's talking about um the best use case for 3d printing low volume spares repairs unique parts uh to improve traditional manufacturing methods and what he made or what this person did was made uh, a better laser nozzle yeah, this by is jessica 3D, yeah by 3d this is awesome Right by three D printing it, and um, so the the link will be in the the hot makes description. If you go to the description of the video, there's we always have a Google Doc. Click on that. Um, you can find the tag from from original BFG, and it'll take you right to this. But what do you think? I mean, we're, I'm going to show it here now. The actual nozzle they did. Um, what's your take on this? I know you had a lot to say on the on the actual uh, feed there. Me. My yeah. my take personally, yeah. uh, I I think it's fantastic, and uh, it and having you know doing a lot of laser cutting, uh, she's absolutely right that um, the air assist is absolutely critical in getting good cuts uh, and uh, deeper consistent deeper cuts and stuff like that. And uh, she has a picture in here that illustrates it really well that when you are dialed in. Uh, with all your settings, like you should almost not see the line um, that that is being laser cut, like char and overspray from you know the the stuff that's that's coming out of the cut and stuff is all artifact of of less than optimal tuning. So you know, I think she did a fantastic job, and and the, if you go into the deep dive of the physics around this and stuff, it's it's really interesting. You know, talking about some laminar flow and all kinds of you know, great. great things to really direct the air because if it, at the at the heart of it, uh, and Joe, you have yet to get into laser cutting much, right? Like I think you have the snap maker and you've done the little diode thing, yeah. but and I have but, yeah, I have the laser add on on the uh, on the Z morph on the Z morph oh, on the Z morph. Yeah, um, yeah. I am hoping that the channel will grow big enough that um, uh, form <laughs> form labs. For, no, not form. Uh, not form. A uh, flux. A uh, flux. No, oh yeah, the beam box. Yeah, we get the beam box pro. Excellent. Well, that that'll be a good ad, and we look forward to that. But uh, right. anyway, what I was going to say was that you know the 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 science behind what she's doing is is spot on, and it's funny because a lot of the the cheaper lasers that are coming out of 
China and, you know, wherever else, you know, like a lot right. of that, the, the last thing that they're really focused on is the yeah. air assist piece. In fact, a lot of those come with the little crummy compressor motor that's for airbrushing, which is grossly right. insufficient for pretty much anything beyond paper, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, so, you know, it's really neat to see that it, it's not necessarily about throwing more compressed air at it, but like, good Dialing compressed air concentrated and and you know there's a lot of steps beyond that too as well as like right. getting good dry air you know sure. and and so i don't know how much she may mention that and some other uh, well, stuff and another thing i noticed too she showed that the two nozzles together the 3d printed one and the metal one and it looked like and i need to read the, the whole article but it looked like she spent a lot of time focusing that in like absolutely perfect because you could see all those laser lines that went down through the 3d print in that one and I imagine the whole idea was to to literally tune your machine so you don't have all those, right? right. And that because in the metal, uh, with the metal nozzle there, you're probably bouncing your laser right off the edge of that if you're not tuned in. You know, if you're not focused, uh, calibrated. There we go, calibrated correctly. Yeah. Um, and that's probably another huge thing. I can't wait to read the the whole article. Um, but I I love that. I love I practical prints are awesome. Well, and it's funny too, because laser cut, it literally is laser precision, right? And so we as makers, a lot of the time get so excited to, to use the tool. And Joe, you can attest to this probably with some of your CNC experience. You get so excited to use it that you don't necessarily invest the time in making sure that it is dialed. And, and a lot of that mm -hmm. means dialing it in for your specific environment, exactly. yeah. leveling and you know doing all the little minutia so that you get right. good, consistent results every time. And that can go for 3D printing as well. We get Absolutely. one, we get it out of the box, we set it up per the instructions and the and the really good manuals that come with them, <laughs> and uh, and then we go. We a lot of us just hit print, and if it looks good, we just we don't focus on going back and dialing everything in. And I think this is an important part. Well, and and Joe, let's make sure we get into that because I really want to talk about your ooze nest, your CNC yeah. experience, yeah. all that stuff. Let's finish out these hot makes because yeah, I know we're aggressing like crazy, but let's do it. <laughs> it's so, so fun. Now. <laughs> Here's another uh, practical make, um, Amos uh, one thirty six. Bought some machina squares. Didn't have a case, so Prusa Alive slash hot makes of the week is a box that prints assembled with a hinge, and let's check it out. I hadn't so, seen this yet, and I'm digging it. Yeah. Yeah. All the squares oh, fit right in. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. That is. And the, what print a, is, the print is great. What a great idea. Right? I I love, you know, and, and Joe, I don't know if you have a good set of machinist tools like squares and, and you know, one, two, three blocks and all that stuff on the way, <laughs> uh, but, but it's, there's something about that level of precision. That's yes. so satisfying. Yes. yes. And no. Yeah. I, I'll, I can get into that a little bit later, but yeah, I <laughs> a lot of time choosing the right tools for what I need. That's a, that's a great, uh, thank you for sharing yeah. that Amos. That's a fantastic nice, nice print. Work. I love that's that. Really awesome. And, uh, last but not least, the master is, is getting closer uh matthew nicholas oh, working oh, on the oh, phenomenal oh. ecto one um that is so, so i really need to print that uh he scaled this thing up i think it's 250 percent um it is let's see i i just the, the chrome work on that the white right. wall on the tires you know the decals i was talking oh. to him last night he didn't get the he didn't uh finish up the windshield yet but uh look at i mean just the phenomenal the drawing down here i'm gonna i'm gonna say it right now that when i go i, I this is how i want to be taken to the, the i want i want my funeral <laughs> procession to be in the back of an ecto one that's where i want my <laughs> casket pretty printed ecto it's got to be a fully 3D printed. Yeah, make it. I'll make it simple on my next of kin. But you know, just 3D print an Ecto one. Put me. Put my casket in the back of it, please. Right. Oh. And it just. I mean, his work is phenomenal. And here, this is one of my favorites. The slide out with all the packs. Yep. Uh, come. I mean, man. We learned a valuable lesson about crossing the streams two weeks ago. Joe. Yeah. Don't do yeah. that. Don't don't cross the streams. Oh. <sighs> 
Um, <laughs> this is the uh, oh, there you got a you got a tape measure go. for scale there. So Perfect. so it looks like about fourteen and a half inches to here. Yeah. Tall. Excuse me. <laughs> And then uh, right about three, three feet, feet long. long. Wow, <laughs> three feet I long. It. I love it. That's uh, that's something, and huh? Right about what thirteen inches? Uh, a little how little does he? Picture. How does he make these things so fast? I don't think the guy sleeps, man. Look at the chrome work. Right. I, it, mm, yeah, man. the chrome work here. Ugh. So he, I know this one's a little bit slower than normal, but he's taking his time because I think the detail in this is. Yeah, that he's putting into it is phenomenal. I mean, well, yeah. nice work, nice work, Matthew. Uh, I I was talking to him last night and again, and he, he was going to work on the windshield soon, and uh, I cannot wait to see this thing done. And um, you know, I don't think you could ship this to somebody, but <laughs> it'll be a nice showpiece. <laughs> I mean, we did, Joe. I don't think you, I don't know if you saw it or not, but we did a walkthrough of Matt's studio a couple of weeks back, and uh, the level that he is, you know, producing. So he does multi. I'm sure multi-thousand dollar commissions and stuff. And right. obviously this is what it takes to produce at that level. Like you want to spend the time you want to put the detail in. If you want people to, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, to and then that, he puts you know? together like a wily e. coyote and carbonite on his shop door in like three days. Like what That's, the heck? This will be fine. Yeah, you know, I'm just going to throw it together next to my. Haunt, so jealous. You know? But uh, so, so hot makes is done. If you liked it, let us know in the comments below. Uh, tell us what your favorite hot make was as well. Um, we're probably chatting along with you right now if we're if you're in the chat. Um, but now that uh, hot makes is done, uh, we can jump back into to uh, what's your symbol? I, I don't know your symbol. You know, we still need to figure your symbol out. But it's the wrench. Yeah. <laughs> so we heard a little bit uh, during hot makes about why you transitioned. You know, you're kind of transitioning your channel from 3D Maker Noob to 3DMN to now breaks and makes. Um, can you elaborate a little more on that? Like you said, you're getting tools, you're pulling tools into the shop. You want to yeah. do a ton of stuff, you know? So, so the idea of breaks and makes the name comes from one, it needs to be something catchy. It has to be something that rolls of the tongue very easily. So breaks and makes comes easy mm -hmm. and it kind of represents me. Literally. It just represents me because you, and then you're broken. Yeah, I, I, I can either take some, I make something out of something that's broken or I try to make something and I end up breaking it, <laughs> you know, and it's, it, it just, it's not limited to one medium. It sure. makes and breaks. I can make anything. I could, I even have plans of a project involving a jigsaw puzzle, which I have, as soon as I came up with this idea, so there was this PPE time, you know, where we were <laughs> 3D printing like 20 hours a day and I was barely sleeping. And it 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 kind of took out this, this enthusiasm I had for 3D printing, you know, after doing that for a couple of months. And I, I just went to this mental rut. I didn't know what I want to do. I had projects, but I didn't really feel like 3D printing. You know, I went to take a break. And as soon as I came up with this idea for the, the, the pivoting of the channel, the CNC, resin, lathe, I even have a melting furnace um, because I have some ideas with that as well. Ooh, and as nice. soon as I, I thought of this, like I started walking around with a notepad because every 50 minutes, oh, I could do that. Oh, I could do that. Oh, yes, I could do that. And it just just started snowballing. And then it was a matter of sitting down and, spending the time and money to get the tools I need in order to build a workshop where I'm at a point almost where whatever I can think of, I have the tools to make it. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. And, and you're absolutely right that by, by uh, giving yourself more variety to choose from that allows you more it, it, potential for inspiration right and so and 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 i think that that's really important as we see a lot of people start youtube channels and do all this stuff and uh, or patreon right and then they're inevitably just falling behind on exactly. yeah on, on stuff and so give yourself the 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 tools and the energy that you need to like keep going because that's yeah. really what ultimately makes you I, success you know, a lot of people don't I see for myself, when I started my YouTube channel, all I could think about was 3D printing. So naturally, when I 
started my channel, I thought 3D printing, you know, and I'm right. new, I'm completely new at this. I never thought that, you know, eventually at some point I want to expand. And the thing is, I've always been a maker. I, I remember the first thing I ever made, I was 13 years old. I took a pocket calculator, I removed the insides, yeah. I got one of these phone cards, I cut a slot, and then I had some contact points in between. And I made a key card for my door where I had a small DC motor that would pull a latch from the top in order to open the door. So you'd have to insert the key card into this calculator outside the door in order for the lock to come up. You know, that was me at 13 years old. And I love that. And I've always been like this. And it didn't even dawn on me that, you know, I might want to expand, but now it did. And it comes with its drawbacks because, you know, you will lose subscribers, you will lose views because you know it's trying to find a new demographic or including a new demographic one that doesn't necessarily just want 3d printing sure um, so that it's it's something it's it's a calculated risk which i was willing to take and i could see it from the video that i released about the 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 3d printed infill vase yeah right um it turned out beautiful um, sure did is that a lot of people that follow my channel didn't like the style of the video, didn't like the fact that I wasn't teaching, I was just showing what I was doing. Um, it wasn't just 3D printing related. So, you know, there's going to be a fall. And unfortunately, YouTube sees that as this video needs to die. So it throttles it completely. And But that's okay, because it's expected. I was expecting it, you know? But from now on, it's just, just going to be that transition to getting the channel back to where it was before. So as a quick follow up on that, are you as a YouTuber, do you believe that you, you have to just what I'm hearing is you, you have to be OK with the fact that you, you can't please all the people all the time, that you're going to have the fall offs, that you're going to have right. the videos that are not landing with people. But you can't you can't take that personally and you just got to keep marching forward because exactly. it's going to happen no matter what. Right. And the, the comments you get, like I was not expecting this from him, like. You know, people need to understand that the amount of time invested and energy invested into a project and the mental the mental health, because, you know, it this really gets to you when you have nothing to produce, but you want to do something that you enjoy, but you can because you might disappoint people. And it comes to a point where that's it. You know, I want to do what I love doing. Right. And whether you like it or not, I'm sure there are thousands of people out there who, who share my enthusiasm for just making things, you know? Absolutely. Um, so it comes to the point where I'll do videos the way I want to do them because it's my channel. And as, as you I'm should. Doing this because it's my outlet of creativity. I'm doing this for you to watch for free. I, you know? It's, and if you're... Most probably, a lot of people who are complaining even have ad blocker on. So, you know, it's exactly, <laughs> and I, I think it's important for a lot of people. And you probably have some advice for YouTubers around this, but it's it's important that you you take a moment to realize that for every negative comment out there, like there are so 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 many more positive feelings. And unfortunately, right. in the world we live in these days, you know, you got to remember we're a bell curve and you typically are only hearing of those people at the very ends of the spectrum. But right. the vast majority of people, they love it and maybe they don't take the time to sure. comment. And maybe it's important that they do to keep people like you motivated yeah. to offset some of the those uh, one or two negatives. And right. the thing is, it's human nature to focus on the negative. It's, it's who we are, especially if you're someone who's trying to be an overachiever or you know, life made you that way that you, you want to be the best you can be. Right. I, out of, I don't know, 300 comments, I'd say 280 of those were, I love this. I love where the channel is heading. This was the best decision ever. Right. Then you get those five comments who, who and, and those five comments keep nagging at you. Right. You know? Those are the ones that you spend the night in bed, cannot sleep because you're constantly thinking, what could I say? You know, like mm. it's, it's, could you it's, say anything? I don't no. know. I, is, is, it, is it better it, just blocking and moving yeah, on? What, what's your take? I've learned that it's one of two things. Um, if it's constructive criticism, I'll take it. I'd love it. You know, if someone is being hateful, I instantly hide it from the channel. If they're being abusive or hateful, <laughs> right. then it doesn't give me the um, opportunity to reply and go down that rabbit hole. Good. Right. 
Yeah. If it's something that's meh, I, I tend to ignore and just move along. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, in in um, you know, you get weird things happen too, and, and I just I just ignore them unless they're completely off the cuff i hide them like you said but a lot of times i'll respond like something really positive <laughs> someone someone just commented on a video that was like a year old on mine and totally you know i know we're kind of off the track here but totally made fun of me being ugly and all that stuff or whatever right and i was like hey i really appreciate the feedback thanks for watching the video and then like <laughs> They're probably like, what just happened, you know? Yeah. And then what's so funny about that, the same person commented on a newer video, love the content. So maybe just that, like, you know, yeah. who knows? But but uh, it is interesting. Um, we're kind of different in that way. I just ignore them. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm well, going to do, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's even like you make a, like a, a 10, 15-minute video, which, by the way, a 10, 15-minute video is about eight, 10 hours worth yeah. of That's it. That's a right. day's worth of work, easy. Right. Yeah. That's ten hours of footage <laughs> and about two weeks worth of work. Right. Yeah. And then after eight hours of editing, you know, you upload, and then the, the first comment is, "You shouldn't be using gloves for that." <laughs> That's all you got out of that. <laughs> nice. Well, I just want to address the elephant to the room. If you're watching, I'm not blurry anymore. So there's that. I was like, what is going on? And it, yeah. Apparently, Pooch was trying to, uh, you know, blur me out. So I'd be like one of those off yeah. camera. Well, well, hide my identity. Work. You know, it didn't work because you could still see the outline of the hair. But but uh, <laughs> well, Joe, I want to switch gears real quick and get back to talking about your experience with some CNC. So you you you've kind of just getting into the CNC the way, you you know, so maybe that you're your CNC noob to some extent. Yeah. Yes. And I, I'm curious what your thoughts are. And did any of your skill set from the 3D printing world translate over to learning how to CNC? Okay. So uh, about 10 years ago, I bought myself a motorcycle and I decided to convert it into a chopper. And once again, I'm the kind of person, if there's, if someone can do something, I believe I can do it too. So I'll teach myself any skill. And I bought myself a mini mill, which I had converted into a CNC because I didn't want to spend a thousand euros on a part. <laughs> so I bought 500 euro mini mill. I bought 300 euros worth of parts. Then I bought $10 worth of aluminum and I CNC the part myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the long way there. Yes. And I had converted that myself. So that was my first experience with CNC. Okay. Um, I still till this day don't know how I've managed to make it work. I still have the minimal in the garage. I'll, I'll be converting that very soon. Um, so I always like, to me, it was the opposite. My first experience was CNC. It was okay. you know, subtractive. Um, and then I went on to additive. So my mind kind of had to work the other way around. Ah, okay. Um, so it, it came when I went back to CNC now, it kind of was, you know, it's, it's, it's normal for me. I, I understand how it works. It's just getting back into the groove of CNC because it's been years since I CNC. Okay. Well, you went the long way to make the parts, but in the long run, you can make as many as you want now. Cause you learned how to do it. Right. Like I needed to modify the chassis. I bought myself a welding kit. I learned how to weld. <laughs> I needed a, um, a, an you, forging, so I bought myself a, a mini lathe for the for metal lathe. <laughs> like that's the kind of person I've always been. Would you say you have more money in um, parts and machines to build the parts you needed for the bike than you have in the bike? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but the it. experience. See, you're yeah. revealing right. what I think a lot of us relate to. It's that it's just an excuse to just get all these awesome tools so we can right. make awesome like stuff. A friend of mine told me. Like, <clears throat> Looked at the bench that I did the the mobile workbench. That is awesome. I'm gonna make the table in your place. Like I'm gonna give you the wood and you, and I'm like, I'm gonna need a biscuit jointer now. I have an excuse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like I couldn't think of a reason why I needed it. You get you just gave me one. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. So talk talk a minute too about the precision thing that I was saying. One of the the videos you took us through, uh, or is, so the the CNC you have is the uh, ooze nest work work B. Okay, yes. and what's the size? What's the workspace size on that? So it's one point five meters by one point five meters, mm -hmm. uh, which is about what four and a half feet. 
Huh. That sounds right. Yeah. Right. A working area is, I believe, 1.3 meters by 1.2, something like that. So it's a, a very large area. It's wow. it runs lead screws, like very long lead screws. Okay. On on all three axes. Um, and I, I had quite a few options. I worked with that because one, they're European, or mm -hmm. for now, <laughs> Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the UK. Um, it was a good price point. Uh, it was either that or the X scarf, to be completely honest. Okay. Um, but I went with that because of you know the forums I was reading. It's open builds and everything. So it was just if if I wanted to modify something, which I'm quite sure at some point I will want to do, sure, then it's, it's just the easier option for me. Okay. Nice. And I love that you took us through the machine actually using itself to make its own wasteboard. And yes. uh, yeah. it, because when you look at what what a wasteboard entails for the you know those brackets and stuff, it's just hot. How many how many holes was it for those little brackets? 200, 200 holes. Right. So think about how long it would take you to actually like measure out and yeah. stuff. And so watching it do its own thing was really cool. And yeah. then and then uh, uh planing the whole top surface is yeah. obviously planing getting it trammed and all that stuff is a process. Because exactly. I mean you you can put as much work as you want into making sure it's perfectly calibrated, you know? And right. You know, things happen. It's a large, large CNC. You might get away with making very small mistakes on a smaller one, or it's going to be a bit more difficult if you take your time. But when it's really large, it's very easy to to make mistakes because one millimeter on one side, you know, will be five millimeter on the other side. Yeah. Um, so you try to calibrate, you try to even out as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But then you realize when you're tramming, the difference is insane. Um, yeah. And it, 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 it takes a while because I, I didn't expect, you know, there was such a, such a process to making sure that everything is perfectly fine. But once you realize the mistakes you did, then you realize, you know, like, okay, that, that could have been much easier. Sure. So the larger, what I'm hearing is the larger you go, and this is probably true for a lot of tool, uh, 3D printers and all that stuff that the, the, any, any issues with the thing will be greatly magnified the yes, larger you go. Absolutely. I mean, keep in mind, like, okay, so you have uh, an M4 screw yep. and a hole that the screw goes into, but there's always going to be that 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeter where of play for the screw to fit through. It's not going to be exactly 0.4. Right. And it can play a big factor in the end result when it's fully assembled. Um, so it's constantly like, even if you want to adjust sort of the, 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 let's call it a camber of the, of the router, yeah. you have eight screws on each side, which you have to get to. Mm. It, oh, wow. It's, it's just, it, you know, it, it's, <laughs> so you're going to spend a lot of time getting it tuned in, but hopefully I days I spent two days. Yeah. So after I assembled it and I tested it out, then I spent two more days just making sure it's it's perfect. The measurements are perfect. Like the 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 width, the the length on each beam on each side matches the the leveling. Everything, absolutely everything. So one one of the things I like to tell people when they're getting into it, because I'm the same way. I always talk about being a broad strokes maker. I want to get right to the making and all that stuff. But when you think about it, like, okay, I, I want to do this over the course of a year, two years, five years, whatever. Spend the time. Mm -hmm. to get it tuned in right as much as you're you know excited about it because garbage in garbage out so get it right and that will pay dividends over that and you'll have a good foundation to start upon so that if something goes wrong you know you're not working backwards into like oh i never trammed this in the first place exactly. and it's not if mm -hmm. something does go wrong you know it's not the cnc for example and it will <laughs> no we all know that absolutely yeah <laughs> when you it know, goes wrong right okay. you know? yeah yeah. Well, the other thing about that is when you when you build a machine and you spend the time right away to dial it in 100%, and I'm guilty of, guilty as charged of not doing that on, on machines, but you get to know that machine much better. So, you know, a month later when, when like Pooch said, something happens, because it will, whether it's 3D printing or CNC or laser or anything, um, you can be look back and say, you know what, on that laser, I had to adjust the mirror to be, you know, in alignment and I noticed that it's not exactly in alignment. I remember that. I can go very back. Good, very good that. point. And, yeah. and I mean, go back to my, my first build of the Mark II live stream, I spent about five hours. And 
<laughs> Nowadays, I can pretty yeah. much build an R2 in two and a half hours, and I'll do it five times better than I did back then. Yeah, I remember I had serviced it, and I'm and I'm. What was I thinking? <laughs> you, know? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, you know, it comes with time. But that's the noob part. That's the brakes, man. And that's what I love about your, you are okay with owning the fact that you are learning Absolutely. and you are taking us along for the journey. I, I'll always tell, I always tell people, I'll always be the noob. I'm always going to be learning something new. Like I'm, right. I'm still learning resin. Now this is my second project, the clock. I'm still learning resin. I'm still making mistakes. I'm actually going to make a video of what mistakes I've learned <laughs> and how I almost almost <laughs> probably <laughs> set my workshop on fire through resin. <laughs> uh, Ooh, will be watching. I will watch that for sure. And tag that tag that hot mix when you do it I, because I, that'll be hot. I, I poured too much resin in one of the phases that I did. It actually melted the resin. Smoke started coming out. Really uh, it started boiling. The, it, is it the chemical reaction? The, the, the external yeah. reaction was so yeah. severe it melted the filament inside. It started boiling, and I'm panicking because you know it's on my workbench. I need to put something underneath. <laughs> I'm trying to grab it with my gloves, but it's really bloody hot. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh We've all has had that moment. It's like, what do I do? do I yes, the fire yes, extinguisher? Yes, do I just yeah, run right, out of the building? Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, there. Are, I mean, there, I'm always going to be a noob at something. And even if I'm really good at something, I'll make mistakes. I'm. I feel like I am very good at painting. You know, model painting, right? But right. I still make mistakes. You know, this I'm, we've I'm actually human. a bunch of your stuff recently, and uh, I I was super surprised. I don't know if Pooch was, but I was like, I didn't know he painted. Like all of a sudden, you had all that the sweet airbrush set up with all the paints, you know. And we're like, no, he so. painted that? Holy moly! Did I you know he can that. sing too? He's a fantastic singer. I well, <laughs> hang on. Let's let's uh, we'll give you the floor. Go ahead, take it away. <laughs> No. <laughs> put him on the spot nice. no I, i've been painting since uh since i was about seven or eight uh, i had my first art exhibition when i was 13 or 14 oh um, wow so yeah i do i do portraits i do abstract i i, I like it that. that involves making it's always been like this for me he's a That's true awesome. renaissance man and i so salute you for that my friend so maybe we'll see down. some of that on the new channel yes Around yes that. It's not really because, a good channel. Yes, you know. I also have, yes, there's so much. I need more time. <laughs> <laughs> it's always time. But are you loving it, Joe? Are you? Oh, there is that excitement again. It's like, good. It's, good. it's just, good. it's, it's all there again, you know? And nice. like, I can't, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning now, every single day. I have my coffee, go downstairs, start working, come back up about six, seven in the evening. I, I just, you know. I mean, you can see the energy, the vibrance in your eyes. Your, I think your hair is starting to grow back. It's amazing. It's uh, and yeah. it's coming out of new places. And, now. New, and more of it. More of it. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. That's awesome. Well, listen, it has been awesome having you. I think we're closing in on our hour uh, sketch. Why don't you uh, take the opportunity to, uh, you know, take the floor here for the last 30 seconds, uh, tease any, you know, new stuff that might be coming, tell people. Where to find you? Where to follow you if they haven't met met you yet? Go. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, if you look for a three D maker noob, you'll definitely find me uh, on YouTube. Now it's breaks and makes uh, where I do uh, making. Well, I make pretty much anything nowadays out of any medium that I can think of, which is recycling, upcycling, um, wood pellets, for example. A few things coming up. Hmm. Uh, 3D printing will always remain. I will still do reviews of 3D printer, just not as, you know, not as constant as before. Um, but yeah, expect, I mean, there's there's literally nothing I would put past me in doing on the new channel. When That's fantastic. To, nice. Like, you, like that, I, you know, there might be fish involved at some point. I, I don't. <laughs> fish. I don't know. Hey, there is a... Chris Warcocky <laughs> has been making some killer lures using 3D printer and resin and all sorts of. Ah, it's awesome. Oh, and the fluid bed thing. Yeah, the fluid bed thing. Yeah. There's quite a lot of art you can do out of the fish skeleton. Huh. 
So. I mean, you the, heard Billy, it here. the Billy Big, ba- Big Mouth Bass, you know, had to come from somewhere. The singing fish on the wall. <laughs> so fantastic, man. Well, listen, it's it. been an absolute pleasure. I, we are both very excited to see, I'm sure, there's the hundreds of hot makes to come from your side of the world and you're out of your workshop and, and honestly seeing the workshop as it evolves. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah, so, here. I probably have to take a break from doing video so I can actually get that ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll let, let, you know, uh, let us know in the comments below. What do you, do you have any questions for Joe? I, we'll have him watch or we'll shoot him over to him. I know, uh, again, we're not live today, but we'll make sure he sees the questions. If you like the episode, let us know in the comments below. What was that? We, we can pose the questions on Twitter. There, there you go. We'll do it. Is your Twitter handle still the same, by the way? Yeah. Is it still? Okay. For now, so you know, just you know, it's not a shock to the system. Like, yes, yeah. <laughs> transition time. <laughs> just so. ah, it happens, right? Perfect. Well, we we can't wait to see again what you what you co uh, where you go from here, and and I love the channel anyway, and I can't wait to see more fun stuff, especially fire. Like I said, tag us. I was always good to fire. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, thank you, thank you again for hanging out with us today, and thank you everybody else for watching. Uh, again, hit that thumbs up. Let us know in the comments below how do you like the show. If you had a favorite hot make, uh, if you have a question for Joe, don't forget, like Pooch just did, hashtag hot makes on the Twitters, and we'll find you. We'll throw you in, and uh, we'll feature you on a show coming up. Um, again, thank you so much. Thank All you right, everybody. Later, everybody. Out of last. <laughs>